just before we close, we got tropion lung uh, longer one. If the disease was to progress in upfront treatment, we have no actionable mutations in those cases, then the choice will be docetaxel remucirumab or clinical trial. Here in tropion longo one, we see another antibody drug conjugate, dato DXD, targeting trope two, which is being compared to docetaxel. Though docetaxel has been a challenging drug, and multiple studies have failed against that. Chilperto, your thoughts on tropion longo one, sir? So this is a drug looking for a better biomarker. Uh, we were underwhelmed by the results that we saw with overall survival. I think that we still believe that these drugs with TROP2 as a target are very promising. I think that we still don't know who are the patients that will benefit the most. I think we learned a couple of things at WCLC24 that will help. The new biomarker tested with QCS looking at the membrane ratio will be something that has some difficulties in terms of the infrastructure that needs to be created, but I'm sure that where there's a, a will, there will be a way, because it does seem to help, at least with the PFS, to identify which patients do better. So that's a classic, continuous uh, biomarker that hopefully will be uh, brought to clinic in the near future and might help us select. But as it is right now, and again, the drug is not approved by the FDA in any ways, and um, AstraZeneca has submitted for approval in the non-squamous subset, and I'll, I'll talk about that a little bit. So overall, the result was negative. There were no uh, significant difference in overall survival uh, for the intent to treat population. For PFS, that difference does seem to be relatively relevant or uh, clinically uh, relevant in patients with non-squamous. You can see the, the data here that the medium survival went from 12.3 to 14.6. So kind of two months, not quite the three to four months that we would like to see the hazard ratio point, but it does tell us that someone is responding. So some patients do benefit from this drug. I'm trying to find out who they are. They certainly are not the patients with squamous cell. You can see that those patients, the curves actually look inferior the numbers were not statistically significantly different, but the curves look inferior for that versus uh, docetaxel. Docetaxel is a hard nut to beat. It is a hard drug to beat. We we see even with KRAS phase three trials, difficulty in beating uh, docetaxel. Patients with genomic alterations, EGFR, AUK, who received DATO DXT actually did better. And those curves looked more wide out, more, more spread out than uh, patients without genomic alteration. So it, that may be a subset of patients where we might start using it if the drug gets approved. So I think we have a lot more to learn. I do believe that the drug has activity. The question is, who are the patients that we should give it to? Gilberto, thank you so much for going over that. A few things to unpack. If there is a silver lining here, it's maybe that the grade three and above side effects, adverse events with data DXD were tap bit better than chemotherapy. With mm -hmm. that said, overall, this was a negative study, but you're absolutely correct that actionable mutation, once the disease has progressed, sequencing, be it data DXD, we're starting to see uh, data from HER3 uh, DXD as well. And then when we're talking about trope two agents, we've seen sasetizumab fail against docetaxel as well. This is mm -hmm. rapidly evolving space. There's a lot happening. We'll eagerly wait to see what the data DXD future looks like. Is it going to be subset population? Is it going to be someone just with actionable mutations or non-squame? So more to come here, but likely Absolutely. we will see this at least as a community generalist for lung cancer, or this is also coming for breast cancer. So we've covered a lot here. Dr. Lopez, thank you so much for taking the time to share some key abstracts from the World Conference on Lung Cancer 2024, the 50th anniversary. For our listeners, let us go over a quick recap. In this discussion, we had a chance to focus on four key abstracts out of hundreds of studies presented at the World Conference on Lung Cancer 2024 with Dr. Gilberto Lopez from the Sylvester Comprehensive Cancer Center. Starting off with exploratory analysis comparing Checkmate 816 neoadjuvant chemoimmunotherapy and Checkmate 77T, the sandwich approach with chemoimmunotherapy, surgery, and then immunotherapy. In our clinic, we're now often moving 
on the periop approach in resectable non-small cell lung cancer, but the true benefit from post-immunotherapy for all our patients still remains unclear. Then we covered Skipper, focusing on how we can decrease some of the toxicities that come along with amivantamab as we continue to see this drug getting approved for multiple indications. We also had a chance to focus on two studies in metastatic space with no actionable mutations, a novel PD-1 and VEGF biospecific antibody, evonisimab, looks very promising, but we will likely need global studies to ensure that this is the right medication for all our patients. At this conference, we also saw the data for DATO DXD being compared to docetaxel in second line and beyond for metastatic non-small cell lung cancer. And we are perhaps seeing modest benefit in non-squamous histology here. Thank you for tuning in. Make sure to check out our other conference highlights and discussions around the current standard of care. We are the Oncology Brothers.